Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Jamie. Hey guys, how are everybody doing? How am I? How am I? How are you? I can't you? talk. Sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> I feel you on funny. that one. I feel you I on should. that one. Well, Not fun. <laughs> Jamie, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? I know you do a podcast. Um, what lurks in the dark? I guess is. What we yeah, so what lurks in the dark, I do it with my friend Macy, and we decided to start a podcast about a true crime that revolved around Louisiana. We've done a couple of offshoots with Marie Laveau and some Cajun folklore, and I'm excited to see where it goes. I what's, am. Um, what's Cajun folklore? I'm so curious too. Is is that a giant like crawfish, or what are we dealing with here? No, there's um. The Rougarou, that's kind of like, I guess, a form of the Yeti or a Bigfoot. Yeah. That they go after children, and the way you ward them off is 13 pennies or a colander. Um, so are, you, wait, hold on, are you telling me every penny I've dropped on the side of the road, I can collect 13 of them? Unlucky 13, by the way. And a penny <laughs> on what, tails is bad luck? So it's like double whammy comparing on if it lands. It's a 50-50 shot, right? Heads or tails. Um, wow, a Rougarou. I did not know that was a Louisiana thing. Yeah, I actually didn't know that part of the Rougarou tale either. But apparently they can only count to 12, which has to do with – I guess midnight. I got something. I got something. Over and over again. I got something in common with that guy. I can only count to 12 too. You know, what's weird is that every myth, like if you look at, all right, so I'm a big proprietor on Bigfoot. Call me crazy. I don't care. Um, when I look at the Bigfoot examining the story behind that, definitely think it's been dumbed down, but to think that there isn't a species of hominid ape like creature. Because if you look at the Yeti, for instance, is in the Tibetan mountains, um, they had the exact same examples and drawn out characteristics that were so similar to the people in North America that were encountering the Yeti or Sasquatch. How did these two people before telephone, email, Skype, DM, Instagram, whatever, be able to communicate the perfect examples of each other? without ever coming in contact with each other unless messenger pigeon can go that far which i don't think happened <laughs> which makes me really think like all these there's this maybe an, a, a race of ape that's out there and depending on where you grow up it's like the same reason if you spend all your life in australia where it's hotter than the blazing suns you're going to be used to the heat you come to antarctica the people that live over there they're used to the cold I went over there, I'd be wearing 30 jackets, but I'm over <laughs> in a beach town. So it's a complete difference. So I'm wondering, is there truth to that? I would think there is. Look, I am a little nerd and I like watching all the Discovery and Travel Channel shows. And there's just too much out there between like ancient like drawings and depictions of people that would be similar to the Yeti. And then you've got like the Dilatov Pass with their Yeti incident, you've got the evidence here, like you're saying, and like the Native Americans have their depictions that look similar to Bigfoot. There's just too much out there for there not to be something we don't know about yet. Have you gotten, I would say, more curious about things since you started the podcast? Or have you gotten more fearful of where you're living because everything you're – I feel like that's the worst thing to do is research where anything that involves in your town because you start finding out stuff that you've never wanted to find out. Like I live in a small beach town of Ocean City, Maryland. Nothing ever happens here. But in my government class, we were taking a lot about courts and jury and all these trial things. My teacher decided to play a 60-minute thing that happened on our town where it was a grisly murder. I was in ninth grade, and I saw this, and I cannot look at my town the same. These people, this guy and this girl, couple from Virginia, came here to stay on vacation and tricked these other couple and to joining them back in their hotel room, chop them up and put their body parts and trash cans all over town. It was this huge thing knowing that. And then you say little beach town where there's fucking sensations, which is like this tourist <laughs> shop on every corner. You don't look at it the same at all. Uh, I don't think I'm more afraid or less curious about what 
those on. I was already curious before. And yeah, there's things I found out about like the most recent episodes that I hosted on uh, Where Lurks in the Dark was actually around my hometown. Never heard about it before, but I'm not scared or more fearful about it. My mom actually told me about it. She's like, oh, by the way, I met this guy that turned out to be a serial killer one time. Uh, so, yeah, she went to high school with his sister, and he, like, made an appearance at a sleepover that they had. So, yeah, I don't know. I kind of just rolled with it. And I lived with 30 minutes from New Orleans, and New Orleans has always been known for their big crime city, um, especially, I feel like Bourbon Street is just, don't go there at night. But... <laughs> One thing I credit New Orleans for that I didn't know was that there's a giant culture of ponies, which are people that dress up as ponies and they do like Olympic, like, you know, the dog contests where they run in between uh -huh. the poles. They do that with people dressed up in gimp outfits like ponies and have whips and sit on saddles. And it's really freaking strange, but I, it's so entertaining. I watched like a 50 minute video <laughs> on it on Facebook where I couldn't stop. I was like, I should be sleeping right now, but this is so funny fucking entertaining um i didn't even know that existed and i've run across some strange things in new orleans but i can't say i've run across that <laughs> it was the best most entertaining uncomfortable video i've ever seen in my entire life the only thing that would have made it <laughs> more uncomfortable is if i would have watched it with my mom um but <laughs> when you look at like cults anything that really happened to do with i guess how it seemed like it happened more in the back in the day than it happened now. Um, it seems like everything that's cult wise or turns into this weird serial killer thing. It was way back in the day, but there's forms of it now. It's just less dumbed down. Like me and um, you know, your wonderful co-host. Besides talking about some, uh, I'm going to ask you this question later, so I'll save it. Um, but we got into PizzaGate. We got into a lot of the conspiracy style stuff. But we really talked about there was this one thing. Um, a factor of was it just you know the freemasons mm -hmm. that's a cult but it's around today and people are it's like so dumbed down to where it's like being vegan like it's like hey i'm vegan everyone just goes like i see people in my town have it all over their truck all over these things and i'm sitting there like but it's a cult it just turned into this thing where we've childed it so much. Like, but it's still back in the day they used to burn. Like, there's what is it? The um, the Bohemian Grove, whatever it was called. With hmm, they, I haven't heard of that one before. All the it, this is a real thing. It's with the QAnon stuff that's going on in the political system right now. All these people that are in the government that dress up in these cloaks as part of a cult and they burn a giant wood effigy of an owl. This is an actual hmm. thing that's happening right now that people are finding out about. Like, holy crap, they got video of it. It's like, yeah, I mean, it's like shadow societies like JFK was talking about. I'm like, if this is happening, like, what what did it used to be and why is it like this now? I guess it's because we all want to be in groups. I mean, there's so many societies out there. If you look in any hashtag, podcast community, everybody's in a community. <laughs> but it's like, what – how far do you go until you're spreading chicken blood on your neighbor's car because their dog keeps shitting on your lawn? That's where I start to question what the hell's happening in life, you know? I would hope that people would question things before I got that far. But, yeah, uh, I guess things have kind of got gummed, at, gummed down, dumbed down and commonplace now, and everybody kind of just, oh, it's just them. There was, I just, guess, I there was stuff that you would know, like, I feel like either you got tricked back in the day, like, holy crap, that was a cult that I was in. Or it was just so freaking obvious you knew it and nobody cared. Like people or Heaven's Gate, those people, the guy that, I don't know if you know what that is. Mm -mm. Okay, so there's this dude, uh, I think his name's John Whiteside or something. He used to come on to do like, back in the day where they did the infomercials, but it was like a Christian channel or some guy would be like, you can be saved from your sins. If you just go here and buy my book and then we can teach you all about the Lord and savior, you know, you know, every prayer and all this other type of stuff that he would do. Well, he eventually swayed in a bunch of people. Um, and 
devised this cult telling all of his followers that he was the son of God. And um, it went really far and went really deep to eventually in Texas, they got a little ranch or a little house or mansion or whatever you want to call it. And about 20 people um, dressed up in these giant purple robes, uh, brand new Nikes, which I thought was really interesting that they included fresh <laughs> Nikes in the article. Uh, and they laid on these bunk beds with bags over their head and slowly suffocated over a span of three days. That sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, and the weird part is not everyone died at the same time. So you would be sitting in a bunk and some dude above no, you Knowing you were going to die. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, that was recent? No, that, this, was, this, was a few, this was a little while back. This was probably like in around the 2000s. It, it kind of uh -huh. stems from the same thing you would hear when they say, don't drink the Kool-Aid. It was all supposed to be this thing. You drink the Kool-Aid together and everybody dies. It's the same thing with yeah. that. Uh, that's so weird though. Cause like you look at religions, for instance, people are starting their own religions like Scientology. I mean, cults, I don't know. I'm trying to, <laughs> Papa John's is a cult. I have no clue. I'm just, I'm jumping. <laughs> Everybody's starting a cult nowadays. Yeah, I guess it's just how far people can push it. But it's scary to think that people can buy into it, something like that, so much that they're willing to do, like, mass suicides. Yeah, like, if you look at, um, there's a famous comedian. I don't know if you ever heard of the Norm MacDonald show. Nope. Okay. Uh, it's on Netflix. <laughs> I really recommend it. Um, there's a comedian on there that's Norm McDonald, the comedian's co-host. His name's Adam Egott. Um, he was on an episode of Joe Rogan, and he talked about how he was involved into a cult. Um, it was uh, called See Do. It's supposed to be this – it was supposed to be like you're supposed to see what you want in life and then do it, some type of weird shit like that. <laughs> and I'm thinking jet skis. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I was a jet ski guy at one point. That hits close. Trust me. I know how you feel. Uh, but, um, he was talking about how they would give, that was out in the Josh or Joshua tree. It was out there. They would give them a bag of water and they would have you as ages of 14 and 13 years old out there at this camp where the camp counselors molested people. And one of the camp counselors actually murdered a lot of the kids. And then he didn't find out later when he was like, I think 30 or something he was talking to some of the people he went to camp with and he realized he was in a cult i was like how many times in your life have you went to fucking summer camp and thought hey it's summer camp it's a cult let me kill a bunch of people because that's <laughs> completely normal <laughs> so i'm saying I mean, like how... people don't ask you to do that every day but yeah but adam was talking about he goes I'm not an idiot, but I'm susceptible to something like that. Like, we've all met really good speakers. Obama, amazing public speaker. Not saying he's a cult leader, but I'm saying is you can give somebody the words, the speech craft, like that skill you get in any medieval video game, speech craft, level 99. <laughs> When they're able to talk to you, a salesman, a car salesman, we're like, I came here to get my car fixed. I bought a new fucking Lexus. I got swayed. There are people like that that are really good at speaking that can manipulate people that aren't very good at understanding. I mean, if you think really deeply, religion, for instance, a priest is bringing you into religion, trying to get you, you know, you're curious about it. They can sway you so easily because you're already on the fence. It's the same thing. We're all looking for something to follow, which I'm bringing in a thing now. Let's turn all our <laughs> Instagram followers. Would you care more about Instagram followers or would you care more about real followers, people that will actually follow you into battle? Let's pick up and adopt some of the homeless population. They will follow you to the end of the fucking earth if you feed them and give them a home. Bam. We're solving the homeless population. Start a cult. I don't want to start a cult. <laughs> you, you do we all do. We all want people to believe in us and follow us. And we all want to get be heard and be known. That's why we have podcasts. And that's why everybody wants to be famous and be the next George Clooney. Well... <laughs> Start with homeless people. At least you could do something <laughs> beneficial. Yeah, it would be beneficial. Like, I would like to solve that problem, but I wouldn't want to do it out of 
like wanting followers. I don't know. I didn't start a podcast to want to be like big and famous. I did it just because I wanted to spend more time with Macy and she really wanted to do it. So I kind of just jumped on the bandwagon and now here we are. And you end up talking about weird things that happen in your, in your town. Yep. <laughs> I guess we could go your boring route. I was hoping we were going to go down the followers and start in a cult where we were going to call it the, I don't know, call it something with the word church in it. I feel like that really seems professional when you include that in there. Which I, th I think we already did an episode on the church of sacrifice. What is the church of sacrifice? <laughs> I don't think it was a long time ago. And her name was Clementine. And shoot, what else happened? I think she ended up turning on her own people and with an ax. You're going to have to go listen to the episode. <laughs> but yeah, it was called the church of sacrifice. And it was a cult. <laughs> Clementine. Clementine, huh? I guess you can't say she's as sweet as a peach. Ah, oh, jeez. Nope. <laughs> That's nuts. Church of Sacrifice. There is a protester that, or an activist, and her call signer for her church is called God's Hammer and Weapon of War. Like... Hmm. Can you just include a bunch of badass names in your society or cult or whatever and just make it the best thing possible? Like, nothing is more religiously threatening to, like, me and spiritually when you say, I am God's battle axe and weapon of war. Fuck. <laughs> Like, that's like a UFC fighter when they come in the ring. It's the knockout champ. This is like God's battle axe and weapon of war. What? What is your job title? What did you just put on your <laughs> resume? You know you're working at Walmart, right? Yeah, I'm aware. Do you want God's <laughs> battle axe and weapon of war stocking your shelves? Because I do. <laughs> Sounds like Michael coming down. That's what I'm saying. Now... What would you say would be something that you found very interesting that you've kind of discovered through the podcast so far? Uh, I think the thing that shocked me the most was how far our podcast reached so quickly. And I think the first episode we had people in Germany and Sweden and Australia, and there wasn't many, but like enough that I was like, why are people internationally wanting to listen to two little Louisiana girls? Like, I didn't think it would go, but maybe 10 listeners and from Louisiana. And now, I mean, we don't have many, but to be able to reach that far, I think Brazil was in the mix now too in Canada. It's like, just the fact that somebody from over there would want to listen to anything that I had to say was kind of cool. Do you think that it's also a factor of your podcast is called What Lurks in the Dark? And they're wondering if you're going, Germany's probably wondering, like, are they going to talk about Nazis? Are we, I thought they forgave us for this already. <laughs> Possibly. And maybe that's something we'll reach into eventually is some side spins. But because Louisiana is going to run out of stories eventually. I do want to shoot one really good topic for you to do that's not in louisiana but it's way worse than the nazis <laughs> okay what you got unit 731 what is that i feel so, like i need a pen yes this is very <laughs> important unit 731 and then also operations cherry blossom at night hmm. so Unit 731, think of the Nazis, but think if the Nazis were run by the devil himself, not Adolf Hitler, the legit devil, because these people were 50 times worse than the Nazis, and they don't really get talked about. And Operations Cherry Blossoms at Night was a, before we bombed them at Nagasaki during World War II and one, mm -hmm. um, they had a planned attack with a submarine with six missiles filled with 150 either thousand ticks or not ticks, fleas, fleas, 
So those little things, the super things that are hard to kill, yep. <laughs> they were all infected with the bubonic plague and it was going to hit off the coast of San Francisco and it was supposed to rapidly, all these fleas infect everyone through San Francisco and spread through our whole nation. That was six months, bef- oh. that was six months planned after Nagasaki, but we bombed them and then they were like, we're done. We don't want to fight anymore. Cancel the No plans. more fleas. <laughs> yeah. So... That was Operation Secret or Secret Cherry Operation Cherry Blossoms at Night. That's the craziest stuff. And then if you really want to, like, have you ever seen the Stanford Prison Experiment? Uh-uh. Look up uh, Willowbrook State School. This was a thing back in the day where they didn't understand a whole lot about mental health and uh-huh. everything like this, so they would. They created this hospital that used to be an old army hospital and they would, parents would just drop off their kid that was mentally challenged and just let them go, let them run free, like let them go into the building and then they would never come back and pick them up again. So what they would do is they would literally inject these people that were mentally challenged with hepatitis, all these crazy ass, like terrible things. And that was our government doing that just to get research. And I'm like, Man, when you really start diving into history, you get you can uncover some stuff where I'm like, wow, like we're really that I guess I can understand that Hillary Clinton deleted a bunch of emails about Pizzagate. I can get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think we have an adequate system for mental mental health now, much less back then. And you get all the haunted insane asylums where people were tortured and they had like the electric therapy and all kind of crazy stuff. So, part yes. of insane, asyl- insane asylums would be a cool episode too. Yeah, you should go visit one and try and get like the actual reactions. I heard a very crazy because, like, um, you see, I got a lot of energy. I'm coming off at you, like, holy crap! This kid. <laughs> well, my school thought I was mentally challenged when I was a kid, um, but they just didn't understand what ADHD was. So I would be locked into this room. What that literally was like an old like storage closet with a desk and they're all white walls and there was the square window in the door when I was in like third grade. And eventually I was like, I'm not going to school anymore. And my parents were like, all right, well, I guess we got to find you another school. So I remember before I left that school, I would always look through the window of that little doorway into that little class that they would always sit me in. This was before cell phones. I couldn't occupy my time. I just sat there staring at a piece of paper. Um, And there was this kid in there who was actually mentally challenged, who would throw his head up against the wall and start jumping around and everything like that. And I'm like, wow. Like, and I would talk about this when I first started my podcast for like 60 something episodes, I would always like mention it or it would just pop up in a topic. And my 77th episode, I think it was a guy named Jared Johnson was on. And as we're talking, I'm learning about him. He's sitting on my couch. I used to do him in person. Um, we're talking and everything. And I start describing this room. And as I'm trying to describe it, I mentioned this kid and he goes, hang on a second. And then he finishes describing the room. And then he goes, that kid's my brother. And I'm like, what? And he starts telling me everything about the room and how this school ended up getting sued. Um, they eventually took, um, his brother to a, in, insane asylum whatever you want to call them, the asylum you know we, place. we won't talk that. i feel like that's such an old term like well they, they, uh, took, they took them to a mental yeah. hospital does that help mental hospital okay. yes. so they, <laughs> they took him there and what's weird about how he talks about how um he talks about this thing he was abused his little brother was abused mm-hmm. and the way they caught it was his brother has the type of thing where if you're talking to him he's doing something else he's still responding to you but it's like he's not really paying attention to you mm-hmm. um so he likes to play on his tablet he just you know he's probably a little bit younger than me maybe a couple of years but he likes to play on his tablet and uh they, his mom video video uh, shot him like you know like hey like it's nice to see you and he thought he closed it but he was still playing on his tablet, just ignoring. And so his mm-hmm. mom was like, well, he doesn't know I'm here. I'm going to screenshot it just so I can get a couple pictures of him. I haven't seen him in forever because he's at this place. Mm-hmm. And the door kicks open and his mom's got it all on recording. And the guy goes, get the fuck up against the wall and throws the kid up against the wall. And the kid drops the tablet on the bed and the mom gets the whole thing. And they sued, they did everything and they won. But like, you look at that and I'm like, 
people wonder why people are serial killers and stuff. Sometimes people are like, I really try and understand the psychological aspect of things, but sometimes shit's just really messed up. Yeah, that's terrible. I feel, and you would hope that that's not something that commonly happens in the health system, but I feel like it happens more often than we know. And that people aren't lucky enough to have recorded it. And people are messed up. There's things that happen in people's brains where chemistries get mixed and then you end up with the sociopaths and that don't know how to control their anger or the abused child that turned out into like that's the only way he knew how to convey emotion or thought that was normal and how you what do I want to say? Well what's interesting for instance about you and um you like first of all you being a nurse You've pro- you have a different perspective than a lot of people would have when it comes to studying serial killers or studying s- people that are murderers, for instance, because a lot of it really, you kind of, like, I, I get very fascinated when it comes to psychology, like watching documentaries of serial killers. I try and look at it like, why are they thinking that way? Like, what caused them to get to this point or what caused them to mm-hmm. act like this and act out in this type of anger and a lot of them they don't really feel remorse which is like the first thing they check for when they're testing if you're insane or not is like do you feel remorse you start to notice how cold you could become when a sense of empathy is lost for instance as a nurse when you first started if you would have lost somebody on your first day it would have hit you hard you probably would carry it forever (laughs) not saying it doesn't hit you now but you're you're you understand things happen And you can't sit there and focus in on that or it's going to ruin your life. So you have to keep on moving forward and trying to do better for the next patient and the next patient and the next patient. Or it does become a little bit cold. And you can kind of see that perspective with a serial killer. You can be like, you're not saying you're a serial killer. I'm saying that like the cold Mm -hmm. aspect of things where you're like, Mm -hmm. I can see what they're feeling and how they're not rationalizing. Sometimes like a serial killer, they just don't know the difference between right and wrong. The same, Mm -hmm. it's like an uneducated perspective a little bit or showing a lack of empathy and understanding of how a person can feel and how much a human life is worth. Yeah. uh, I don't know if you talked to Macy about this, but the shutting your emotions off and getting kind of used to death actually scared me a lot when I was about two and a half years into ICU nursing that I actually went and talked to my manager about it. I was like, I feel like there's something wrong with me. Like I should be more upset about losing people and patients before moving on. But, and like you said, in order to do your job, you have to shut it off and put it into little boxes so that you can take care of the next one next door that is alive and might have a chance. Um, But yes, it does give an interesting spin on the look into serial killers. Like all these, not every single serial killer was abused as a child, but how, that could shut off their emotions and become normal and they just kind of like separate their human brain from like survival brain and can do some of the horrific things that they do without remorse and just like oh I got angry and so like I'm angry at my mom so I went kill all these women that looked like my mom because I knew killing my mom was wrong but I got to take my anger out somehow. I don't know. Weird spin, but. That's logical. I mean, I don't want to kill your own mom. You got to kill someone else's mom. What happens if their mom was an asshole? Then it's like, hey, it works. Or their dad or whoever it was. But it's, I don't know. I had to watch a lot of criminal minds and all the things. And they're all based off of like the FBI profiling and then you like dig into these cases that we're starting to dig up now. And it seems like it always revolves back to its source somehow. Like they might start picking off the ones that look similar to whoever they're angry at. And then it always comes back around and they end up getting their mom, dad, or whoever the source of the problem was to begin with. When that's the case, not always the case. Sometimes they just do it just to do it. Like, the gambling problems and they just want money so they break into people's houses and end up killing them anyway and then it just becomes a thing you think we can get so blinded by anger blinded by addiction to the point that you can lose all sense of what it means to be human 
Yeah, I think that's a possibility. Because I look at mafia people, like how fucking hard do you have to be? Like people talk about that's how you be hard is when you're like that tough or something like that. I'm like, is it or is it like just a lack of empathy of what it understands to kind of be a human life? Like people always talk about like that's hippie thinking. It's like, but is it though? Like you got to (laughs) think like – you want to talk about like how like you questioned, you asked your manager after a few weeks was like, Hey, like, you know, I'm getting cold to a lot of this stuff. Is this something wrong with me? But we're cold like that every single day when somebody gets shot on the news or somebody dies somewhere, everyone's dying somewhere. It's like, you're just more involved into it. So it's more, I guess, drastic for you to see that change happen so quickly rather when us, we're just like, well, that just happens. It's like, you kind of have to come to that conclusion in a hospital too. Yeah. And, but yeah, you can definitely become complacent and things that have become normalized, like all the shootings and the deaths and the murders. Oh, well, like that's just the, like, it just happened. And it's always that just happens until it happens to you or somebody, you know, or love. So I think the media and like normalizes things and when it becomes normalized it's easy to shut off emotion like the mafia if your job is to go out and like take care of people all the time then eventually that's gonna become your normal and you're gonna lose the value of human life if that's your job to like take out people you can become emotionally detached kind of like it's really weird when you look at war for instance that it's so easy to kill the enemy because they're seen as the enemy rather than a human being for a lot of those guys. They talk about, it wasn't like, like uh, I heard a comedian talk about how his dad was a war veteran. And he said the weirdest thing when his dad like gets older now, he talks about it more now that he's older. Um, Mm -hmm. And he said like, do you ever think about the people that you've killed? He goes, no, I only think about the people I've lost because that, is what I remember is the people I've lost. And he's like, but why wouldn't you think about all the people that you shot and killed? And he goes, because it's killing the enemy. And that's what it's seen as everyone. You lose the aspect of human life when you start looking at them as like, they're threatening me and they're threatening what is mine. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe that's with a lot of serial killers is the fact that I'm not trying to humanize serial killers here, but that's what they are. I mean, Charles Mm -hmm. Manson, for instance, there's a book coming out about the government was drugging and giving him his drugs to drug these people and kill them. What the fuck? Like <laughs> he didn't, did he know, or was he just doing, he was in this caught in this mix mash of things and the government's like, well, we need research. So might as well let the guy do it and take the fall for it. Like hmm. you keep catching him and he's getting released. What the hell's going on in our court system? I don't know. He's slipping through the cracks. It's like, what, what do you mean? He's slipping through the cracks. Hmm. That's a different spin on the Manson story. I hadn't heard that one yet. I mean, great music, talented family. (laughs) Jesus. Another cult. (laughs) Another cult, man. I'm telling you, it's all over. Facebook's a cult. It's filled with our grandparents and it's filled with our parents. (laughs) But, yeah, I think just they have a way of getting desensitized and disconnected and And some of them talk about it so easy, like back to the no remorse. Uh, When they confess, they just tell their story and it's not a big deal and straight faced. And Do you think that it seems like serial killers kind of have faded off? It seemed like it was more popular back in the day. I mean, I can understand with two things. One, technology's gotten so fucking far. If you even try serial killing or doing any of that today, pretty sure you'll be caught by like Tom Cruise predicting the future or some shit. Um, (laughs) But if you look at how common it was back in the day to where it's at now, I don't think serial killers are as common. I think it's all massive killings now. If you notice, it seems like you have to do something terroristic wise to even get your name in the news or get even be heard of. It seems like that's somebody's moment of fame, but serial killers, like they would pick one by one by one and do it that way and do this long divulged thing. But I think with the rise of mental health nowadays, is it going to become more common or are more massive killings going to be more common? It seems like now we're looking at the number rather than the dexterity of the kill. I guess I hadn't thought about that one recently, but you really don't hear, or at least I 
haven't heard in the last 10 years since I've been paying attention of a new serial killer versus mass shootings or mass suicides. Like those are more commonplace. So I guess with the technology, like you're saying that people are easier, more easily caught in the detective work and the fingerprinting and the forensics that maybe the mass homicides are going to become the new serial killer. I sure hope not. I mean, either way is terrible, but I really haven't heard of any new serial killers. Do you think they're going to end up catching the Zodiac killer? I hope so. Or is he dead? I mean, maybe he's dead already, but I hope that we can figure it out still. Yo, imagine if Joe Biden and his kind of like forgetfulness ends up like diving into being like, yeah, well, I was this, the Zodiac killer. And you're just like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What did you just say? Like, did you see that video um, the Joe Biden where he goes, if you can't tell the difference between me and Trump, then you ain't black. And then it's like, what? And then it goes, it, have you seen that? No, but I've heard about it. <laughs> oh, it's the funniest thing. And then somebody put music up to it and it's them. It's like a bunch of people carrying Joe Biden in a coffin and it says Joe Biden 20 or 2020. And it goes, bar, bar, nah, 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 nah. I'm like, <laughs> yo, imagine if Joe Biden came out as like, I was the Zodiac killer. And like, what did he just say? Like the whole newsroom stops. Like what the, what TMZ is like, wait, did he just. That would be something? like the cricket moment for sure. It's like everybody's silent. It's like, it's Joe Biden. Who cares? He could get away with it. He could because nobody would believe him. Nobody would believe a fucking <laughs> word. He could just start admitting to shit. Like, oh, let me tell you. One time we burned in front of the giant wood owl. We just started burning people, you know? You know, let me tell you about the Zodiac Killer. Now, I had a rough period in my life where I was, and everyone's like, what? Are we? Is anybody taking, is anybody paying attention to what he just said? Like, he just said he was the Zodiac killer, and we're all just glossing over it. It's Joe Biden. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the big, that's the big what if right there is, should we question that he's Joe Biden, or should we question if he's the Zodiac killer? Because now he has multiple personalities, and I don't know where to go. <laughs> that would be really funny. I don't think that's actually going to happen. <laughs> he's listening. He's going to message me on like Twitter or something. Be like, hey, I don't like what you did there. Stop Dive revealing my, my identity. <laughs> now, I wanted to ask you what I asked Macy, which was, what is your craziest nurse experience? Um, I had mentioned a good example, which was uh, I had a past guest on here that was an emergency uh, EMT. Mm -hmm. or a paramedic i couldn't remember which one um he had a got a call about a knife wound and they show up to the knife wound and they're all prepped thinking it's like a like a like a, like a pocket knife or something it's mm -hmm. a fucking samurai sword so i guess it would depend on what kind of crazy you're talking about crazy had... oh, hold on crazy like something you know i would probably like or crazy also for you like one that was really emotionally traumatic i've you. had i've had like the cool stories that people would think were crazy i've had like crazy people throwing stuff at me stories that weren't very pleasant things to be thrown at and then i've had like patients tell me stories and i'm like what like how did this happen to you okay i want to hear one of yours and then one from a patient. Okay. Um, I think the craziest thing I've seen, and that will probably stick with me forever, just because this really doesn't happen very often, at least not at my hospital, was there was a post-cardiac bypass. So you're like heart bypass surgery. And I don't remember exactly what went wrong but the doctor the surgeon ran into the room and the patient lost their pulse and they reopened the patient in the room at bedside cut open the skin cut all the wires that kind of connect your rib cage back together after a surgery like that and like open them up 
and you can see their heart. And the surgeon and one of the nurses had put sterile gloves on and were like massaging the heart massage like on TV to get a pulse back. And everybody's like losing it or not losing it, but trying to figure out what we need to do to get this person back. Cause this is not the normal code situation. This is like our hands are inside them on their heart. I see nurses don't do that. Surgeons and OR people do that. So yeah, that was probably the craziest and most memorable. Did they pay extra? That sounds like a deep tissue massage. <laughs> I, don't think this person ended up doing that so well and i don't think they got <laughs> any extra or they probably recharged extra but <laughs> you don't want <laughs> a cardiac massage i all right so i'll share news bears. i'll share a cardiac story i was watching a thousand ways to die and mm -hmm. i don't know how much of the show's bullshit but this was really entertaining <laughs> but there's an actual thing where um a guy was robbing this dude's place the guy gets up, um, the homeowner, and he goes to around the corner, and um, I guess the dude scared him or the dude hit him in the chest with something, and he had a heart attack. Uh, the woman calls 911, but she starts doing CPR. Um, mm -hmm. Eventually, she stops and calls 911 and finishes the phone call. The heart didn't re-kick back on, but then a minute later, it kicked on after the CPR was already done after a couple of minutes. Like, she wasn't applying the compressions anymore. And it's supposed to be some rare thing where if even after, like, five or ten minutes after they stop CPR, your heart can still restart. It's actually happened before. It will be, like, pronounce somebody, and their heart rate picks back up on the monitor. <laughs> Holy crap. That's, that's awesome. That's like the spirit goes back in, um, <laughs> like, Doctor Strange. Uh, yeah, it but, doesn't uh, happen often, but it has happened, and we're like, "What? Why is there a heartbeat like in that room?" But I want now look. It didn't last very long, what? but there has been a detectable heartbeat after we've pronounced them, and they've been asystole. Oh, they didn't get to come back to life. No, but we did have one that. Oh, that's another crazy story. So CPR, ACLS, all the shocks and stuff that you see on TV. In between, normally people don't come back enough to be able to talk or be this guy in between every round of CPR. We'd get him back for a minute and he'd be like, wake up and be like, keep going. I don't want to die. Like, just keep going. And then he'd be out again. We'd keep going and we'd get him back and he'd like, say it again. Like, don't, I don't want to die. Don't let me die and go back out and we'd continue. And it went on for a little while, but like, Having somebody pop up in the middle of all that and like telling you they don't want to die, that was another freaky night. Okay. That doesn't happen very often either. Holy shit. <laughs> um, I also want to go back to the thousand ways to die. The reason why it was a thousand ways to die was the guy got back up and he scared the burglar that was trying to exit out of the three story house and he fell backwards and died. So there was a good bit of karma there. <laughs> Um, he, did, he did not so come back. You didn't die when your heart stopped, but he ended up dead anyway. Well, no, he didn't die when his heart stopped. He, that, that dude lived and then he killed the bank robber that killed him oh! in the original spot. So it was like a crime of justice. Okay. That's pr pretty cool. So <laughs> he lived and the other one died. Okay. I got mixed up there. It's like, what do you mean he died anyway? Now. <laughs> What's your, uh, what's um, the patient experience that you've heard? So, I actually met her twice. Ooh. And since you mentioned samurai swords, samurai swords are involved. She got in a fight with a samurai sword? I did it when I was a kid. <laughs> she actually had her arm damaged in a fight trying to save another woman in her apartment building with a samurai sword and Ho so she eventually on. lost her arm yep hold on how, the f how did the f uh, i am so so lost was did she's trying to stop a woman that had a samurai sword no so the woman was being attacked by a man that had a samurai sword and she in trying to protect the woman that was being attacked like lifted her arm up to try to like you know defensive protect your face and like he hit her arm with the samurai sword and she ended up losing her hands. Oh God. <laughs> oh, what? First of all, where was this? This was in New York. 
What? I didn't see her till later. That's where the paramedic guy with the samurai sword, I swear to you, that's where he got his call from. I'm like, what the, f are people just walking around with fucking samurai swords in New York City? Really makes me not want to go there. Even if the Statue of Liberty is that beautiful, I don't want to get stabbed with a samurai sword. I'm pretty, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure I remember saying she was in the Bronx. Hmm. Maybe. But yeah, she had been attacked by somebody with a samurai sword. I'll tell you my experience with the samurai sword. My grandfather bought one from like a yard sale for like five bucks. I mean, shit was rusted shut where you couldn't even pull it out <laughs> of the sheath. One night, so I talk about this story and I believe in immigration. I believe in all these things. Um, but we heard a giant bang and they live in Delaware. We heard a <laughs> giant bang out. We live out like in the country part. And I'm like, what the fuck was that? So I get up out of my you know, bunk bed that I have at my grandparents' house. And my first thing I do is I grab the samurai sword off the wall and I'm just going to hit him with it in the sheath. I don't give a shit. <laughs> my grandpa's door is right around the corner from mine. So I come out of my door, fucking grandfather in tidy whities I mean, the little small <laughs> white underwear with a shotgun. And like, as soon as I pop around the corner, I'm like, fucking, whoa, 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 it's me, it's me. And he's like, okay. He's like, stay behind me. And then we're rolling around the corner. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I, I'm, well, I, I could easily like hit this guy with the samurai sword. You're old and you're holding a shotgun. I trust you, but I also don't trust you. Because I know how many <laughs> pills you take in the morning just to be able to live. Um, <laughs> sounds messed up, but yeah, he jokes about it too. Uh, but we went out to the front yard. A truck had hit one of our electrical posts, like the giant. We only had one. And mm -hmm. I mean, if out of our whole like two and a half acres, you hit the one pole. there's one fucking electrical <laughs> pole and then the house. And you hit that one area, that one pole that's just in the middle. It's not even attached to anything. It has a light on the top of it. That's it. Um, the dude drove and hit the thing. We had a truck that was sitting there. I was like, what the hell? Cops are coming. The guys ran from the scene. We were thinking drunk. Turns out it was immigration. These people were illegal. Huh. that had hit the pole and they had run. But I was like, fuck, like, that's my one experience with the samurai sword. I was like, what would have happened if I would have encountered somebody? Like, would I have, like, because we ended up getting it out of the sheath, like, a, like a few months later, just playing with it. I dropped the <laughs> hair on it. It legit split it. So I'm like, this is like a, what would I have done if I would have been able to like hit him with the sheath and then I would have whipped it back like Dewey Cox and the thing <laughs> comes off the sheath and slice somebody in half. I don't even think I could do it. Like, I feel like, and honestly, I'm an idiot with the samurai sword. I was chopping pineapple with it at their house. <laughs> and my grandma was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I finally got it open. And I wanted to. What is it? Fruit Ninja? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, what the hell else am I supposed to do? We spent $5 on the thing. I never get to use it. She's like, what'd you expect? It's basically just supposed to hang there and look cool. I'm like, look, you can chop up pineapple that way. Or we could do it this way and have a hell of a lot more fun. She's like, you're ruining my cutting board. I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> All I can say is life is about experiences. Can't say I wouldn't have found a cool way to use it too, like cutting fruit. I've, pineapple's good, so why not? Just like it's Thanksgiving, just pull out the samurai sword. Let me Turkey. just... <laughs> you want light meat or dark meat? Let me get in there real quick. <laughs> well, but yeah, so all kind of samurai swords today. <laughs> yep, all, all, all types. We're we're not picky. But Jamie, I appreciate you for doing the podcast. Thank you for coming on. I'm glad Macy could set this up. I want to get both of you on eventually. Have both. Uh, what lurks? Yeah, in the I love that because this was a lot of fun. It's very random, as you can tell. And Joe Biden, I swear, is the Zodiac killer. <laughs> I don't I, I want that but, to be an overall takeaway message from this episode he did it he's the zodiac killer and nobody knows i seen it i seen it with my eyes <laughs> well jamie do you want to uh, promote the podcast where people can find you at sure um you can find me and macy at what lurks in the dark on podcast what lurks in the dark podcast on instagram facebook um our email is what lurks at the dark at what lurks in the dark at gmail.com. Um, we just got a new website that's attached to our Facebook. 
and we'd love to hear from you guys. And we can be found on Spotify, Apple, iTunes, um, wherever you can find podcasts. So give us a listen, and we'd love to hear from you guys. You counted your links like Joe Biden counts his Zodiac kills. <laughs> on my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for listening to this episode of Out of the Blank Podcast, and stay tuned for our next episode.